All right, so I'm going to show a little bit about our bag valve mask. So this is a, a standard one that you'll find. This one is uh, this is the one we use in the hospital here. They're pretty much all the same. A couple big keys to it. Make sure that you're always delivering 100% oxygen into this, of course, and that's usually what comes out of the wall, but at 15 liters. So I'm going to hook this up to our flow meter, and I'll turn the flow meter up to 15 liters. Watch what happens. We're going to fill this bag. Well, we've seen this before. This is very similar to that bag that we have on the non-rebreather. 100% oxygen inside of this piece right here. So when I deliver a breath, and as this recoils, watch the bag, it pulls the 100% oxygen into here. The next time I deliver it, it delivers the 100% from here to our patient, okay? This is also called a self-inflating bag for that exact reason. It self-inflates like that. There's a couple different one-way valves through here so that air doesn't come back from the patient back in, into, the, into the, the back valve mask. The big key is though, this is a one-time use thing. We're not gonna go around and use this on everybody in the ICU. We're gonna get a new um, back valve mask each time. You'll often hear this called by a brand name called Ambu Bag. Uh, that actually is a brand name, so we try to stay away from that. Uh, but back valve mask is the best verbiage for it. Um, the mask will come off of it. It has two different pieces. It has the piece that hooks up to the ET tube, endotracheal tube, or uh, hooks up to the mask. And then it has the exhalation side. They make this dummy proof. You can't hook the mask up to here. They make it so it will not work. I've seen it tried multiple times in a code because people get nervous, but it will hook up really nicely to this piece right here. So when I deliver the breath, it goes. Now, let's say this happens. I lose my gas source. This is like a bad day. The oxygen, the, sorry, the hospital loses all of its oxygen supply. And I have a patient that needs resuscitated. I can still resuscitate with this, but remember, I'm gonna be ventilating them with this bag valve mask, but I'm not going to be oxygenating them. So it'll work in a pinch, and you don't have to have oxygen coming to it. But for most, for I'll say for most, all successful resuscitations, you need oxygen coming to it. But it will work without a gas source. So if I need to ventilate a patient a couple times while somebody's bringing in an oxygen tank, it will work just fine because it's a self-inflating bag. But notice what's happening. It's trying to pull the air from here up to the bag, and it's deflating that bag each time. And there's a little valve on here that actually pulls in room air. So it makes sure that you can deliver your breath each time. But what you have to be sure of is that this is on 15 liters. This bag is inflated at all times when you're delivering each breath. And you'll see that bag slowly inflate here. There we go, now we're ready to deliver the breath with nearly 100% oxygen. So a couple of helpful hints with this. In the package, these things come kind of collapse like this. Make sure the first thing you want to do when you pull these out is you open it up. All right, I've, I've actually responded to more than two codes where I've saw where I've seen somebody resuscitating like this. Now, don't laugh, respiratory therapist. Yes, I've seen it. You probably have too. This has to be opened up like this for ventilation. You notice the mask, the top point. This is where the nose goes on on a all the patients. When you see a mask that's not exactly uh, uh, circular, that is where the nose goes at the top right there. And we'll show that in just a second with this CNE method. Okay, so in real life I would have gloves on, so we're going to simulate gloves today. Uh, but uh, I know that Stan's a pretty clean guy, so we're not going to worry about with this uh, with this video. So, bag valve mask, here's how it works. I'm at the head of the bed. It's almost impossible to do when you're right next to the patient. You have to be at the head of the bed where I'm standing. It seals on the nose like this. We usually push a little bit of pressure here and then we do what's called a C and E method. Now I don't have the largest hands in the world, I'll be honest, but I can still do this on most patients. The C are these two fingers right here and the E are these three fingers. The C is gonna go, is gonna seal on the mask and the E or these three fingers are gonna hold right along that angle of the jaw. Now, Unfortunately, not all of our patients have a nice, well-formed jawline. So, in some cases, we will have to employ other people to kind of help to seal this mask on. So, seal the mask on, C, E, and I'll deliver, my, deliver the breaths. Now, how much do I deliver? Do I just crush the whole thing? No, not really. What you're looking for is visible chest rise. That's when you know you gave enough volume for your patient. So, you'll notice I'll push down with these fingers, 
And with these three fingers, I'm actually pulling the jaw upward into the mask. If you just push down like this, you're gonna really kink off the airway. That's not good. What I like to think of doing, I'm actually grabbing it back here, pulling the jaw up into the mask and then pushing the mask down on top of it. So it's almost like I'm squeezing all this, this direction. And that really helps to give a good seal, to give a, a good seal each time. Now, this is not great technique because what a lot of times if somebody has a pillow, that's not fully straightening out their airway. So I would remove the pillow so their head would come down to the uh, patient cot and then that's how I'm gonna deliver the breath. Now remember with our breaths, we're gonna deliver, the, the best method is one breath every six seconds, 10 breaths per minute. That's a long time. So you'd be sealing it on like this. Two, three, four, five, six. And that's 10 breaths per minute, that's a long time. What I was initially taught was, breathe with how you're breathing. Here's the problem with that because the first code I went to, I was breathing pretty fast, and I was doing this, because for one, I had to run, which I don't like to do that, and then for two, um, my adrenaline was pumping, so I was breathing really fast. Hyperventilation is highly discouraged during any type of code. You increase interthoracic pressure, you can't get a good squeeze on the heart with CPR, so make sure you keep your breath slow. If you're not sure what the answer to any question about breathing rate is, just go with 10 breaths per minute, a breath every six seconds, and um, you'll be right in, in some correct range. The great thing about this device, bag valve mask, it can go to either side. So if you're left-handed, you're right-handed, whatever you need, a lot of times we'll do a dual method if we're having a lot of trouble. We'll have a C and E on both sides, and then we'll employ our respiratory therapist or our nurse helper to actually ventilate while we seal this mask on. This is temporary. We don't want to do this for a long period of time. We need to so usually put uh, an oral airway in, a nasal pharyngeal airway, or an endotracheal tube, an advanced airway. So that's the next part. I'm going to show you a little bit about OP airways, NP airways, how to measure, and how to insert.